Today, we've headed a few docks over to view another beautiful trawler. This is our friend James's 1980 CHB trawler, and it's one of our favorites. In fact, every time I visit this boat, I have a little bit of envy about the size of his galley and his salon. So come along with us for the second installment of Trawler Tours. But wait, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that James himself is like a rock star to little Rosie. In fact, he's one of her very favorite people. Right, Rose? Hey y'all, welcome to the See All Life. I'm Andrea, this is Tom, and we have two pups. We're a couple of Texas transplants living the empty nest life to the fullest. For us, that's living part-time on our 44-foot Defever trawler in San Diego. Our hope is that as you join us on our dreams and adventures, we'll inspire you to discover your own. This is our friend James and he's in the same marina as us down here in San Diego and we're aboard his trawler this morning. Thank you for letting us tour, James. Appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about the trawler. Um, let's see, I bought this about a year ago. Saw it, was introduced to it from a friend of mine who knew that a friend of his was selling a boat. Uh, went to the Konakai Marina, took a look at it and within a minute or two I knew that this was the boat that I wanted to buy. It needed a lot of work but I love the open layout, the floor plan. It was kind of love at first sight. I love that you're a trawler person just like we are. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> How'd you get into the boating life? You know, I'm guessing since I was probably three years old, I'm the oldest of six and my parents threw us all on the swim team. So I've been swimming every day since I was literally like three years old. And when I moved to San Diego, I became an open water ocean swimmer and uh, swam at the Cove every day for about 37 years. And when I realized it was time for a change, when I left La Jolla, I re I, one thing that, that I knew was that I wanted to be on the water. So a boat was kind of a logical choice for me to move from living in the village, swimming at the Cove every day, to buying a boat and spending most, if not all, of my time here. So it was, it just made sense. Yeah, yeah. it does. It's so peaceful down here. Yeah. James has one of the best views you could have in this marina. So yeah, it is pretty it's nice. a lot of fun. Sunsets are spectacular every night, so. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, people pay $10 million for this view, right? <laughs> That's right. So funny story, James, you used to have the trawler that we toured a couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and um, you sold that. What made you want a bigger boat? Doesn't everybody want a bigger <laughs> boat? Yes. <laughs> The 35-foot uh, boat that I had was fine for the year or so that I had it, but I just kind of outgrew it. I needed more space. I wanted to have two heads. Um, I wanted to have an upstairs deck. So there were just things that I had always wanted in a boat and felt like it was the right time. So uh, I feel like I was very lucky in finding this boat this size at the right time. So, yeah. yeah. I, I need to say this, James. Your interior design and decorating skills on a boat is second to none. It really just sets your boat apart from all others. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's something I enjoy doing, so it comes naturally. So yeah, you're good at it for Thank sure. You. Thank you. Okay, I already know the answer to this question, but yeah. what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on your boat? So craziest. Um, <laughs> Well, I've had a lot of fun times. Okay, the, the parties okay. have those, actually those been crazy. have been a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, and we, I love taking the boat out and having people on the boat. But the craziest thing was uh, back in mid February of this year, I had an accident on the boat where I had opened up the latches to my engine room, and they have these little slats that go across, and uh, and I thought that the latches were securely in place, and I stood on one, it gave way, and I fell about five feet onto my back and I broke four ribs and my arm. Uh, pretty bad injury. I'm just now reaching the point where since February, so it's now been over six months, um, I'm just now reaching the point now where I've healed and I'm able to do most of the things that I was able to do before. But that was something, I mean, you hear all the time about injuries happening on boats, mm -hmm. but uh, now I get it. Yeah. Like it can be a, an amazing place, but you have to be careful. You have to watch your step yeah. everywhere you walk yeah. on a boat and where your footing is. And there's a saying you want like a three point 
stance or a three point. You are. Yeah. yeah, like one hand and two legs, or two hands and one leg, or Absolutely. something like that. A captain yeah. told me that once. I don't think it'll happen again. Anything no. like that. Like now, I have a level of awareness that I didn't have before. So all, coming out on the other side, it was a good thing. I actually learned a lot. Sure. But uh, yeah, that was by far the craziest thing that's happened on the boat. Wow. <laughs> so what's the best thing you like about live aboard life? Well, I don't know if it's any one thing. I love that I can swim in the water here every day. Like whenever it is that I'm feeling a little tired or I just need a shift in mood, I literally just throw on my bathing suit and I jump off the back of the boat. So I swim in the water often. That's pretty amazing that you can kind of literally within 10 seconds right. and 10 feet of where you are, you can be in the water. Right. Um, that's pretty amazing. Again, I really love all of my friends love to come on a boat, so there's never a time when I feel like being around people and I ask them if they want to come over when it's I get no's. Like everybody wants to come on the boat, so it's socially, it's perfect, and it's just soothing being on water. Yeah. Like it's about as good as it gets. It's, I agree, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like the best kept secret out there. It is, yeah. yeah. Until you do it and then it's like, okay, I get it now, yeah. right? This is yeah. It. Well, let's get to the tour, James. You got it. Welcome aboard my 1985 CHB. It's a 50 foot trawler. Um, I've had the boat for about 18 months now. I bought this boat having upgraded from a 35 foot trawler that I really loved before, but I realized shortly after living on that size of boat that I wanted something a little larger. Um, spent a pretty good amount of time looking for a larger boat and found this one and fell in love with it right away. And I hope that uh, after giving you a little tour, you'll understand why. The first time I stepped foot on the boat, um, I walked into the main salon, and as you can see, the thing that I, there are two things that I really liked most about it. One is the windows. You can see from neighboring boats that rarely do you get so many windows where the lighting inside of a boat is really wide open, so I really, really appreciated that. And the second thing is the just the amount of wood, the amount of teak, the floors that are, that. Uh, the boat has and gives it that kind of classic look that I really, really appreciate about old trawlers. Nothing against newer boats, but I just like the old style boats and plenty of space, wide open, um, where you can sit at the bar while someone's cooking and entertain guests. So uh, yeah, I fell in love with this boat the moment that I walked on and with the little bit of work that I've done, I think it's, uh, it's a great place to entertain and have fun. So another thing that you'll really appreciate, that I have come to appreciate about the boat is a couple of things. The wooden ceilings are really well made. As you can see, there are some wooden handrails that are along both sides of the boat. Um, and these come in handy, like I took the boat out to Catalina a couple of weeks ago. And sometimes when you encounter some rough seas uh, and you're down here with a couple of friends, it's easy to hold on to this. But more importantly, it's just beautiful. Again, it gives it that old classic style. The other thing is I really do like entertaining on the boat. And one of the things that we like to do is have parties. So when we have a party, as you know, the number one ingredient besides an ice maker <laughs> is music. So uh, throughout the boat, I have a total of, I think, 12 speakers. Four of them are found in this room, so that whether we want to listen to 80s music or whether we want to listen to some real dance music or just kick back and listen to something relaxing and quiet, um, I have a stereo that I'll show you a little later that allows me to adjust the volumes in the different areas. Um, and this, <laughs> we actually pick up this table, we put it on top of the ledge over there, and this becomes our dance floor, um, which we've used many, many times. So. Uh, Think about that when you're looking at your next boat. So one of the things that I've enjoyed since buying the boat is making it look like a home. I have the luxury of being able to spend a lot of time on my boat, so when people walk in, I want them to feel as though it's a reflection of who I am. Many boats that I walk into have the same kind of color scheme and the same fabrics and they look um, similar. And, uh, and I wanted to do something different, so you'll have a chance to see how the use of color and plants and openness and things that are meaningful to me are decorated throughout the boat again so that when someone walks onto this boat not only do they feel comfortable but it almost kind of tells a story about who I am and what my life is like. I'm a single guy so I do eat out a lot but each time I have guests on the boat one of the things that we really enjoy doing is cooking together. Another thing that I've come to appreciate about this boat is the bar right here that doesn't that kind of leaves an open space and doesn't separate me from my guests when I'm cooking and they want to sit here and, 
have a drink or a cocktail and enjoy conversations. Uh, many of my friends who own boats are green with envy given the fact that I have a full refrigerator and freezer. And as you can see, I'm able to fit all the food and drink that I want, always fully stocked. Same thing with my freezer. This is a great thing to have on a boat if you're able to get one. And of course a microwave. And in a minute I'll show you some of the other amenities that I have in the kitchen. A few other things that I really like about my kitchen. The latest addition that I have is an air fryer. And I use my air fryer all the time because it's just so simple and quick and easy to clean. Um, I also have the full stove and oven which we use to make pizza and I cook lots of things on the stove. Um, I think an Instapot is a must-have. I'm a soup eater so I love to cook soup and I always have a fresh pot of soup brewing. Blender, coffee maker, and a juicer. So everything that I would want inside of a home is pretty much here on my boat. Um, I have a deep, uh, a deep sink um, for washing dishes. Again, um, a luxury that not many other boats have. And of course, the creme de la creme is that I have a, a dishwasher so that um, if I'm not in the mood to wash dishes in particular after a big party, I can just rinse everything off, throw it in here, and it washes the dishes perfectly. So uh, I think that pretty much covers it all. As any boat owner can tell you, storage is a commodity. I have little tiny nooks and crannies like this where I can put my spices. Um, and olive oil and things like that so uh, again it's really nice to have storage space on a boat but I did want to call attention to the drawer space that we have uh, for utensils for pots and pans and plates and paperwork and uh, and lots of canned goods and things like that so again um, it's always nice to have plenty of storage space and I'll be sharing that with you as we continue with the tour so welcome to the master cabin um, as you come in the main salon, walk down the stairs, this is the master cabin, king size bed. Again, plenty of wood, gives it that old classic feeling. Um, I love the windows that you can see are almost ocean level, nice cool breeze all the time. Plenty of wood, wooden floors, but I have to tell you a little bit of history of this boat. I have, I have closets that store all my clothes, but believe it or not, um, the previous, previous owners, this was actually a sauna. <laughs> so it was literally a sauna and, um, and all the parts are still here for it. Um, but obviously the person who owned it before me decided to change it to a closet. Um, it was a couple and the woman wanted closet space. So they converted from a sauna to a closet, which I'm happy with. But uh, I love this. I love this room. Again, plenty of drawer space, plenty of room to move around. I love the height of the ceilings. Um, I, I have all the amenities that I need, an air conditioning, fans, a television, so just a comfortable place to come and sleep. And when I'm not here, um, guests really appreciate coming here as well. And connected to the master cabin, of course, is the head. And uh, in here, I have a sink. Um, I have a stand-up shower with plenty of room and not too unusual about what you would expect in a connected uh, master suite room. So, Welcome to the, uh, the guest cabin. Um, I love this room. In fact, it's probably my favorite room on the boat in that the slats that are, the wooden slats that are all along the wall just give it that old classic feeling. Again, plenty of room light from the hatch. Nice, comfortable queen size bed. Plenty of storage space, you know, some closets to the right, drawer space to the left. Um, I actually love sleeping in this room. In fact, I sleep better in this room than I do in the master cabin because it has such, I, I love the light that comes in and it's just a comfortable, smaller space. So yeah, I think most people would like a room like this as well. So this is the second head connected to the guest cabin. Um, again, what you would expect, um, but there is one thing unusual that I've really come to appreciate. Um, in addition to the shower, I have a bathtub. I've only taken baths in here twice, but each time that I did it, it was fantastic, and people actually marvel at the idea that a boat can have a bathtub on it. So I guess I got lucky with an old boat like this, but uh, I, want I hope a bathtub. you enjoy it. <laughs> I want a bathtub so bad. <laughs> Doesn't every woman want a bathtub? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> So I am kneeling in front of my engine room now, and as you can see, I am surrounded by two um, things that I really appreciate. One is uh, my washer and dryer. 
built in one set nice and easy works perfectly and again a luxury to have on a boat nowadays I really really appreciate this also have my uh, vacuum cleaner wall mounted over here and bef behind me is the engine room I'm in my engine room to be honest this room scares me a little bit <laughs> it's so complicated but over the last 18 months I've learned a lot about this boat um, and I imagine that I'll spend a lifetime learning more and more but uh, yeah this is a great if anyone is mechanically inclined you'll have a ball down here um, but you know everything from vacuum pumps to hot water pumps to the two engines to all the different tanks that we have it's a wonderful room um, for those that are mechanically inclined this will be your cup of tea for those of you that are more like me it's a uh, it's a it's a lifetime of learning but a great place to spend time with and, and expand your uh, horizons these are caterpillar 3208 engines I'm not gonna say they're considered to be the best but they definitely are a very good long-term standing reliable engine um, and from what I know if you take good care of them as I have um, they should last forever I travel quite a bit for work and although I spend a lot of time on the boat there are times when I'm not here and I think as secure as this marina is every marina has theft um, to some degree or another and I heard about this uh, little device called WISE, W-Y-Z-E, which is a little camera that I've installed here. And it records to the cloud 24 hours a day so that if I were to ever have any kind of break-in, I would have a video of what happened and a record of what happened. But not only that, what I really like about using it is that when I have guests on the boat, if they have questions, like if they can't find something, it has a feature on here where you can activate the voice recording and I can actually talk to them through the camera. So for like $75, and I think it's like $8 a month, I don't know the exact cost, but it's definitely worth the added security of knowing that uh, somehow your boat is being watched in one way or another, and you can communicate with people. So I would highly recommend this app. We're now on the cockpit, and in terms of time spent on my boat, this is where I would say, apart from sleeping, this is where I spend most of my time, as you can see. Um, it's a it's an open room with plenty of sunlight um, I'll share with you a few things but the first thing that I can tell you is that the comfort of having a couch and a rug and a coffee table and a couple of other things it really just makes it easy to have a couple of guests over or my daughter come over and we can watch TV we can just relax for a little while so, so I'll show you a couple of things that make it even more convenient best thing that I like about uh, this area is just the openness, as you can see, wide open here, wide open there. I can even open up this panel, that panel, so that the eyes and glass just feels like you're sitting in an aquarium of sorts and it's just wide open. Um, as you can see, I have a barbecue pit back here. The last thing that I have to point out is that, as you can see, I have plants kind of everywhere. Again, plants just make this place feel like a home to me, so more to come. So everybody loves the dishwasher. Everybody loves a washer and dryer. Um, those things are nice. I love having the outdoor mini refrigerator. And it doesn't help to have fresh drinking water and a sink back here with little canisters for a wine holder. And there's even a secret bar behind the television. But as anyone will tell you, the number one commodity on a boat is your ice maker. Um, fits perfectly in space. Um, it can be used for any number of things and uh, yeah it's it's number one priority on our boat so uh, I'll show you a little bit more in just a few minutes as well I have to point out though as you can see I talked about the speakers earlier two speakers on the cockpit again if you just want to listen to quiet relaxing music or you can do a little dancing back here as well when you have enough people on your boat for a party everybody's looking for a place to dance this is one of them Andrea I've seen you here as well so <laughs> <This> is true. <laughs> So you could only be so lucky to have teak floors on your cockpit, as I have here, which definitely required a little bit of work when I first bought the boat, but as you can see, the result is just a beautiful floor here in the cockpit. And I'm about to make you really green with envy by showing you the teak floors that I even have upstairs on my flybridge. So come on up to the flybridge, because I would be remiss if I didn't show you my disco ball. Come on up. So here we are on the flybridge. I'm not going to go through all of the instruments on the panel. We'll let you guys go through that. Sitting in the captain's chair right now, up nice and high, 
Um, I have a bench up front so that when we're cruising, people can sit up front, open up the eyes and glass, and enjoy a nice cool breeze and a view, which is really comfortable. Um, you can probably see that I have teak wood floors up here, which make it really nice. Um, the disco ball, absolutely <laughs> important. I love it. And, uh, and yeah, this serves as a uh, probably our third dance floor when we're having our party. So uh, you can find people dancing on the boat. And the reason why is that if you remembered in my, in my first section, I said that we have 12 speakers on the boat. We've gone through four downstairs. We've gone through four on the cockpit. And I have four speakers up here, two which you can see are mounted on the, uh, the dashboard. And then I have another two that I'll show you in a little while that face out on the back deck so that uh, people who are suntanning and having cocktails and having a conversation back there can hear the music as well. So um, swing around and I'll show you the back deck. So uh, again, flybridge right now, plenty of room to sit. There's a bench over there where you're sitting, Andrea, a bench on the side, bench up here captain's chair bench up front um, and what I really like uh, what, one of my favorite another place on the boat that I really enjoy is when I roll up that eyes and glass nice cool breeze coming in from the back of the boat I have a cushion back there a chair back there a beanbag chair great place to lounge work on your tan read a book I've even had a few people sleep back here every once in a while and they really enjoy sleeping under the stars and if you have kids, what they love the most is, I'm guessing we're probably 20 feet up and they love to jump off the back of the boat into the water. So uh, this is just a really fun area where you can listen to music, relax. We play cards, we play Uno back here, and we eat dinner. So this is just a wonderful place to um, relax. We also, the symphony is right there so we can hear the symphony, a lot of bands, and uh, yeah, lucky to have this room. So I, uh, one of the first things that I did was have my cushions recovered on the boat. These were already done, but I had this little uh, pillow cushion, these cushions, and they're blue and white striped matching underneath the cover as well. Um, so yeah, just a little personal touch. Everyone's heard of a room with a view. I don't think I need to say much more. <laughs> So here we are on the bow of Deep Blue, the name of my boat. And uh, just a couple of quick things to point out. Um, I think this is dance floor number, this is dance floor number four. <laughs> so we had down in the cabin, we had the cockpit, we had the flybridge, and now we're on the bow of the boat. This definitely serves as a dance floor because I have speakers out here. If you remember, I said that I have 12 speakers on the boat and these are the final two that I can connect out here and we can have music on the front of the boat as well where people are tanning. Um, so, uh, and the only other thing is you can see the anchor. I have fresh and salt water um, rinse right here in the hatch to my bedroom and I think that covers it. So here I am on the swim step. Um, as you can see, this is a place where I store my stand-up paddle board, my kayak, and my, uh, what I don't have yet, but will soon have, my uh, dinghy. Um, I have a little swim step back there as well. You can get up to the, uh, you can get it to the cockpit from there. And I tell you the best thing that I love about this is that I have an indoor, outdoor, I have an outdoor shower that has hot water and cold water. So when you come in from a swim, if it's a little chilly, which the water can sometimes be back here, you can take a nice hot shower before you get back on board. Well, what a beautiful tour, James. Thanks so much for your time and letting us, uh, for this fantastic boat. Um, sure. You've done so much with it and put so much love and care into it. Uh, it's just magnificent. Thank Great you. job. Thank you, thank you. So is this your forever boat? Um, that's a good question. I, again, it's kind of like, you know, why did you get a bigger boat? It's like, does anyone, it feels like a forever boat, but everyone that I've talked to always experiences some kind of, they want a bigger boat or they want a nicer boat or a longer boat or a small. So I, I suspect that that change will happen in the way that it's happened to me before and yeah. that uh, as much as tempted as I am to say yes, I'm probably going to go with this probably <laughs> isn't it. I think things will sense. only get better. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for having us aboard Deep Blue and um, thanks for being such a great friend and neighbor as well. And we got to get together more often, my friend. You got it. It's good to All see right. you, Tom. Thanks. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll meet up the four of us and go for a little cruise again soon. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. See you all soon. Bye.